Every day, we take pictures of our friends and family in different moments, doing different activities. One picture can provide a complete different story on who, what, when, why, and where. If you look at an album from Facebook and order them in chronological order, you can almost see a play-by-play -play of the actual event. I am often reminded of one painting when thinking about this. It is the most controversial, universal, and thought-provoking painting, regardless of how long it was painted ago. The snapshot painting is called The Last Supper. One of the most famous artworks that depicted the life of Jesus is The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. We're going to tell you all about the painting, what makes this piece so amazing, its religious value, specific breakdown of its meaning, questionable interpretations, and how this piece influences people, specifically its influence on attitude and culture. Today, I'm going to meet one of my good friends, Natawadi. We will take you on a journey together to explore deeper about The Last Supper. I'm Natodi Choksuatin. Hi, and I'm Kobe Bunbanjotsui. Today we are going to be the host of the documentary of the world famous painting, The Last Supper. The Last Supper is one of the major events in the life of Jesus. It is said to be the final meal that Jesus shared with his 12 apostles before his crucifixion about 2,000 years ago. Leonardo da Vinci began painting The Last Supper in 1495 and finished it by 1498. Leonardo to Sir Piero da Vinci was born on April 15, 1452, in Vinci, a province in Florence. Da Vinci's name is derived from the son of Monsieur Piero from Vinci. He spent most of his childhood in Milan. He painted the Mona Lisa and the Virgin on the Rocks and is considered to be the greatest Italian Renaissance painter. Leonardo painted the Last Supper for his patron, Ludovico Sforza, Duke of Milan. The painting relates to matters of religion and contains symbolic signs, some of which are highly controversial. The Last Supper is Jesus' final meal, where he predicts one of the apostles will betray him. Popular beliefs say that Judas, one of the apostles, betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. The Last Supper is a gigantic painting measuring 460 centimeters in height and 880 centimeters wide. It was placed at the end of the wall of the dining hall in the monastery of Santa Maria della Grazia in Milan, Italy. The painting had been subject to many obstacles, such as the cutting of the doorway at the feet of Jesus and the vibrations from the bombings in World War II. These obstructions have caused the painting to deteriorate terribly. As a result, the figures were unrecognizable and a restoration was required. The major restorations were done in 1978 by Pinin Brambilla. Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper is not the first depiction of the Last Supper. Judas was usually depicted very differently from, the, from this painting. Most previous painters placed Judas alone on the other side of the table, so only his back can be seen. There are 13 figures in this painting consisting of 12 apostles and Jesus. From left to right are Bartholomew, James Minor, Andrew, Judas Iscrocot, Peter, John, Jesus, Thomas, James the Great, Philip, Matthew, Thaddeus, and lastly Simon the Zealot or the Canite. Leonardo da Vinci experimented with new technique and styles while painting The Last Supper. The Last Supper is a realistic painting that focuses on reality. Leonardo used three techniques for creating this masterpiece. Those techniques consist of a vanishing point, chiaroscuro, and a focal point. Many people often misunderstand and assume that the Last Supper 
is a painting of frescoes, but in reality, it is a painting of tempera, an older artistic technique. Tempera is done on dry plaster rather than the traditional wet plaster. Da Vinci used oil paints and a mixture of egg yolk and vinegar that seals the stone wall with a pitch to fix the layer of tempera. According to some researchers, the reason why Da Vinci decided on this type of paint instead of frescoes is that there are some limitations during the fresco painting process. Da Vinci especially disliked having to wait for the paint to dry for, uh, before applying his next layer. The main problem with tempera is that it does not secure the work of art at all. A few years after the work was complete, it began to crack and peel. Regardless of where the viewer stands, Jesus is always at the center of the painting. This is because of the use of a vanishing point. This technique is composed of diagonal lines that converge to one focus point. In the Last Supper, the vanishing point draws the viewer's eyes towards Jesus and the vanishing point. In addition, the study of light and shadow play a significant role in the Last Supper. A specific technique used is chiaroscuro, which provides a sense of softness and natural feeling to the painting by playing with different tones. For example, on the face of Phillips, one of the apostles, delicate chiaroscuro shading is used. Lastly, there is a focal point in the Last Supper that is centered around Jesus. Da Vinci's uses of complementary colors on Jesus' outfit contrast directly with the colorless window placed directly behind Jesus making him the focus of this piece. Many art historians believe that there are hidden messages from Leonardo da Vinci in this painting. The most famous one is the reactions of the twelve apostles after Jesus told them that one of them would betray him. It captures the intense emotions and the characteristic of each individual apostle. The twelve apostles form themselves into a group of three, from left to right of the painting. The first group consists of Bartholomew, James, and Andrew. At the first hearing of the news, there was great commotion. Bartholomew, the most left apostle in the painting, is surprised and curious. His upper torso is inclined towards Jesus, while James is comforting Andrew and Peter, shown through the touching of the shoulders. Andrew is possibly proving his innocence or acting utterly shocked by the news. The second group consists of Peter, Judas, and John. Peter looked angry and appeared to be holding a knife with his right hand and put the left hand on John's shoulder. Judas looks taken aback after knowing that Jesus knows of his betrayal. His right hand was clutching a bag thought to contain silver, the bribe for betraying Jesus. The same hand knocking down a salt container may relate to expression of betray the salt, meaning that to betray one's master. Moreover, Judas' other hand was reaching out for the same bread that Jesus was reaching out for, which follows Christ's prophetic words that the first man to share bread with him was also be the betrayer. John appeared to be talking to Peter, all weakened and swooned. The third group consists of Thomas, James, the elder, and Philip. James looked horrified with the open hand gesture up away from the table. His eyes, looking at the bread before him, afraid that he might be the one who may take the same bread as Jesus. Thomas was raising his hand and pointing upward like wanting to ask questions from Jesus. Philip looked worried, turning grim face towards Jesus while twisting his fingers. The last group includes Matthew, Thaddeus, and Simon. The three seem to be discussing about the betrayer. Thaddeus and Matthew inclined towards Simon, who was explaining something to them, with his hand wide spread, showing his palm. Matthew, who was known to be a doctor with his hand gesturing towards Jesus, seemed to be asking Simon of questions referring to Jesus. The Last Supper also claimed to have a lot of involvement with the number three. First, the apostles are divided into groups of three. Moreover, at the background, Leonardo also painted three windows and Jesus' arm gesture that demonstrates a shape of triangle. All of these groups of three represent the Holy Trinity, the doctrine of Christianity. Unlike other artists that also painted the Last Supper, Leonardo chose not to add a halo to Jesus or any of the apostles. This is because he might try to present them as ordinary people. So this may lead to the hypothesis that he doesn't believe in God but nature. Moreover, musical composition may also be hidden within the painting. Giovanni Maria Palla, the Italian musician, claimed that there are hidden notes underlying beneath the position of the breads 
on the table and the apostle's hand gesture to be music notes. If we drew the five music lines across the painting, the notes suddenly become a melody of a song. The four groups of three apostles indicate that the song is played in rhythm of 3-4 that is very common in 15th century. The song sounds like a requiem that is a hymn or a song service for the death. Leonardo's intention of the hidden melody could be referred to as foreseeing of Jesus' crucifixion. Furthermore, Paula also discovered that when lining the note, it provided symbols similar to the ancient Hebrew that means devoting to God. This theory is considered to be possible because Leonardo da Vinci not only mastered in painting and sculpture, but also has an interest in music. The interpretations of the Last Supper are one of the most talked about topics debated around the world. A new interpretation can come up anywhere and anytime. But what we know for sure is that this painting is one of the greatest paintings to ever be created. Leonardo da Vinci was not the first painter who painted the Last Supper. However, his depiction is the most famous and influential. It has inspired artists around the world since it was first created in the 15th century. There are many copies of the Last Supper done in different forms, such as mosaics, sculptures, and paintings. Da Vinci's assistant painted two earlier copies of the Last Supper that are almost the same size as the original. These copies still have the details that cannot be seen in the original that aid in the restoration of the Last Supper. One of them is at the Royal Academy of Art in London, and the other is at the Church of St. Ambrigo in Ponte Capriasca, Switzerland. Another copy can be seen in mosaic form created by Giacomo Raffaelli early in the 19th century in Vienna. Many modern paintings and artworks are based on the Last Supper. For example, Andy Warhol in the late 1980s used pop art to create abstract versions of da Vinci's paintings that consist of more than 60 silkscreen paintings and paperwork. Moreover, The Sacrament of the Last Supper by Salvador Dali, Self-Portrait Looking at the Last Supper by Mauricio Escobar, a life-size three-dimensional sculpture, and The First Supper by Susan Doritha White where 13 men were replaced by 13 women. This demonstrates the wide genre of da Vinci's painting's influence on the art world. The Last Supper does not only influence artists, but also many writers by its mysterious hidden messages. Many writers wrote documentaries, books, and articles about the Last Supper, such as The Templar Revelation by Lynn Pignett and Cliff Prince, and fiction novels such as Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. The Last Supper contains many principles and symbols that are still significant till today. During Sunday church, bread and wine is often passed around as a symbol of Jesus' sacrifice. The bread represents his flesh, while the wine represents his blood, known as emblems. During the Last Supper, Jesus provided instruction on how he should be remembered. This celebration of Eucharist is still practiced today. We can easily say that Leonardo da Vinci has given a special gift to the art world and also mankind. The Last Supper has influenced and inspired people for generations. People from different fields and backgrounds are attracted to this unforgettable painting. It is one of the most famous and valuable paintings in the world that contains mysterious messages. The curiosity in the meaning, the infatuation of the beauty, and the respect in its uniqueness that keep people attracted to Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. <laughs>